Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Kailin here from the marketing team of Fossia Singapore, and I'll be the moderator for this webinar. Thank you for taking this time off your working hours to attend this event. And in this webinar, we'll be having Julie as our speaker. And here's, in, here's an introduction of Julie. Julie is currently leading the business development and go-to strategy in Europe. And today, Julie will be presenting a little context about the banking industry and how they compete in South Korea. Without further ado, let's welcome Julie. And I now hand over my time to her. Thank you so much for the introduction, Kailin. Okay, so I am going to share my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I guess that's a yes. Yes, I can see, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, as Kailin said, I will give you some more insights on how Korean banks compete. And throughout the presentation, I will also give you some examples of how 4CS is facilitating this. So I, I call the, the Korean um, economy a tiger economy. That is because tiger is the uh, symbol of Korea. It actually is represented the strength and the courage of its people. So before going into the entire um, uh, how banks compete, I wanted to give you some insights on the country and on the culture of Korea because it's very specific and it will help you understand how uh, Korean banks are, are basically competing. So after the Korean War, which was in 53, um, Korea went from uh, underdeveloped to a developed country. So they overcame poverty and malnutrition illiteracy. And um, they basically did that by really focusing on um, the, the intellectual side, on educating people, on making sure that everyone has the knowledge and the skills. And South Korea is also the biggest percentage uh, of its GDP that is going to R&D, which is bigger than the U.S. And because of that, they were able to really become a uh, strong power. And this is why in, in some uh, literature, uh, South Korea is also called like the Asian miracle because in four decades, they really became um, a vibrant economy let's say so they still have that that focus on improving product design and quality um, and therefore all of the the technologies that are produced is really focused on let's say the efficiency of of, of of making it more efficient so if you ever been to south korea you will also know everything is going really really fast um, so that's that's one of the things and then the Korean government now so they overcame this uh, this this entire obstacle let's say and now the next phase is really to go or take it further and go into a, a total paperless society so that's the objective that the cover that the government set for 2021 so um, it, it is still a very highly regulated country and for banks that's the same so banks are really uh, regulated and that is basically going to undermine um, the, the the competitiveness and it's going to drive up the costs as well even though that's a little bit like getting getting better but still it's uh, it's highly regulated so now the context of the banking in Korea. So as you can imagine, it is fast changing, uh, but it is also a very competitive market. And um, Korea already in 2005, they set up the legal frameworks for um, electronic signature. And since 2012, that was for the electronic forms. So because everything is, is going fast and there is this a constant drive for more knowledge for doing more um, like the, the the working culture is also to work really long hours but since last year the Korean government decided to introduce a 52 hour work week to just balance that work life out a little bit so that's why they they had like this initiative called PC up 
which means that um, employees cannot stay into the office for really long hours. They need to be in the office, let's say from uh, eight o'clock to seven o'clock, but then afterwards the AC is turned off, the electricity just goes off. Um, so then the lights, so they cannot, they cannot work in the office anymore. So this changes again how business is done. And this is, again, like finding better ways of working and making it all more efficient. So banks really have some, some challenges because it is so regulated and it is very difficult for banks uh, to go overseas and to to increase like some, some, some market share uh, overseas. And in within the country, there is a huge competition amongst banks. The picture that you see right there is the um, five more like five more most prominent banks. We all work with them. KB is number one bank in Korea. That's since 2017. They uh, were able to um, take the place from Shinhan Ban Bank, who was uh, we was previously the the first one, and KB really uh, was able to um, to take that position mainly by improving their business processes and reforming the system and the process management on how they are doing business and. Uh, making making every process as fast as possible. Every bank, if you're looking into their mission statement, every bank is just going to say like embrace a digital transformation. I don't think that that's very different from Western um, banks, but uh, still, it is very it's it's applied more widely in South Korea, I feel, than it is in um, in in Western world worlds for that matter. So um, everything is focused on improving the accessibility for the customer, but mainly like improving the, the brand image. And they're doing that by also um, making sure that they're close to where customers are and to be able to really compete better, they're going to cut costs through this efficiency gain and through having a more flexible model of doing business. So the solution that 4CS is offering to banks is really, to, it's a niche product. So it's only the e-form that we're offering. We're only offering uh, the electronic forms. So an electronic form is basically a paper form, but in a digital, in a digital manner. Uh, we are different from any other electronic form solution out there because 4CS is offering a, it's, it, the, the e form is XML based. So, first of all, XML that can combine XML and PDF. But the, the main differentiators and why banks in Korea are working with us is because 4CS is offering that mirroring. So one e-form can be mirrored over two different or, or multiple uh, devices. There is a master section management, which basically means if the master section of a form is updated throughout uh, every other form that has that section, the, the forms will automatically be updated as well. So for example, terms and conditions, they might change. So if the master form terms and conditions are changed, every form that has that terms and condition will also be changed. Next to that, forms are changing dynamically. So dynamically, that means that only the content that is relevant for the, uh, for the end user will be shown. And as I said, we're only offering that E4 niche product. So it is really important to have um, an, an integration with third parties and uh, based on the requirements of the bank our e-form can be um, can be built out through uh, throughout every every business process the e-forms are uh, mainly applied in three phases or you can ev even call it like three use cases that we see in banks which is using the e-form in the branch office to make the branch 
um, more, more competitive, paperless and easier to do business than outside the branch and um, in the internal processes of the bank. So I'm going to touch a little bit on the company, of course, yes, and then I'm going to dig in deeper on how banks are, are competing and what it really looks like with some examples and I have some pictures as well. So for CS, even though the company exists since uh, 1995, they are actively working or we are actively working with banks since 2012. So that is when the regulatory framework for electronic paper came into place. So um, what we are doing for, for banks is uh, making sure that when banks are doing this process re-engineering exercise, that we are there to help them guide through that entire process and making sure that uh, every paper form that existed before can be converted into an e-form. Same look and feel, same layout, but just digital, digital manner. So um, in the beginning, when we, when we reached out to banks, banks were not really receptive because they were like, yeah, we already have an electronic form solution. We built something in-house or we have a PDF-based solution. But the thing was, it was never used. So the, the electronic form solutions that banks had was either too rigid, uh, it took some, a lot of time to bind all the different forms into one output form. Um, and then in terms of the banks that had an in-house developed product, it was just, it was very, very tough for the IT side to, to manage it. And for the, the user side, it was not so intuitive to use. So in the beginning, let's say it was difficult to open up that first conversation because we had to overcome that, that obstacle. But once banks saw what for CS is offering, they were they were very open into trying it and once we had one bank signed on basically what happened is that every other bank followed and um, this is important as well to know that 70 percent of our workforce is technical so when we are getting feedback from our customers from the banks that we're working with we're just going to incorporate that into the development of our e-form to make really to offer an electronic form that is the uh, most competitive on the market and this is also how we became a market leader in south korea so this is how the new bank branches in south korea look like so uh, there are still the traditional bank branches of course but they're mainly into the buildings to where the bank has the administration office. They're not separate bank branches. And even though bank branches are, just, they're reducing it everywhere. We see that same pattern, like bank branches are being cut, but then there are still those people who want that human touch, who want to, to go to the bank branch. And to avoid that those people have to drive like 10 miles or five miles to, to go to a bank branch, in Korea, they are um, making like these smaller bank branches into shopping malls, into coffee shops, as you see on the right side. And on the left side, uh, this is actually also in a shopping mall. It, uh, Ruby Bank has a bank branch next to the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really, it's like all paperless bank branches and the idea is to be closer to where their customers are. So customers don't need to overcome like this obstacle of, oh, I need to take the car or I need to take the subway and go specifically out of the way to go to the branch. No, they really want to be where their customers are spending time. This approach is mainly for retaining the existing or customer base. It's, it's, it can also be for attracting new customer, but the main reason is retaining customers, making sure that they can serve as the existing customer base so they don't lose their customers, right? Then the second approach is like, you need to retain the existing customers, but it's also important to extend 
um, to extend the, the market share, like find some, some new customers or upsell, cross-sell, let's say, into the existing ones. And therefore, in Korea, there is this, um, like this concept called portable branch or outdoor sales system. It depends a little bit on the bank. Like some banks call it outdoor sales system. Sometimes they call it portable branch. Um, but it is really offering all of the banking services that can traditionally be done within a branch, in a physical branch office. It can be done on an iPad. And so uh, bank teller or, or bank banking agents, they're just going to their customer, uh, wherever the customer is, or to attract new customers, they're going to be, for example, in shopping malls, and they're going to make a, like a, a sales offer to new customers to sign them up for a new credit card, for example. It's really actively going to customers, signing on new customers, and making sure that whatever they're doing, like like it's still in the same idea. Everything needs to go fast. So <laughs> um, the signing on a new customer can be as fast as five minutes, let's say, for example. On the uh, bottom of the slide, you see the uh, the process. I'm not going to go into the details. If you have any questions, please reach out, and then we can we can talk about it further. And then the third use case or the third uh, application of the 4CSE form is within the internal processes, so the administration, let's say. And with that, like from the bank branch to the outdoor uh, sales system to the internal processes, we can really cover end-to-end -end the business process flows. And with that, reducing the risks and reducing the costs, obviously. So a typical project of a bank branch is in three phases. So we, we never just come in and do just like one, one part, like let's say only the outdoor sales system. What we usually do is we come in with one project and then it is uh, spread across all, um, all, all workflows. So the first thing that you see that in light green, the first thing that this is for, this is an actual project that we did for, for a bank. So the first thing is really revisiting the bank branch, making sure that there is no more paper in the interaction, that it's everything is going uh, fast with the use of an e-form. This usually uh, would take up about one year. Let's say that each phase would be like one year. That's realistic. And then the second phase would be like extending what was already done. And this is like extending the e-form use and application into the back office and also throughout an outdoor sales system or a portable branch. And then the third phase is extending all of it throughout um, a, a business processing platform and really making sure that there is there is no more paper in uh, in the workflows and that every uh, member of the staff has access to that electronic form solution. And this is a little bit more in detail how it would look like on that same project, the example that I took before. So phase one is only to, for the in this phase, it was only for advice, onboarding, and personal loan. And then you have phase two, which is the, dark, the darker green, and the very dark green was phase three, the administrative process. So this is how typical projects run. Um, it needs to be said that we usually don't uh, do all of these professional services ourselves. We are working with technology partners to facilitate that. To, to do the professional services for implementation and integration. As I said, we are a product company. Our focus is on developing the strongest e-form possible. So this is why we decided to have this indirect, um, indirect approach of implementing and integration throughout technology and solution partners. And then going into the results, what we see are the like, obvious, the obvious ones. So it's really 
making sure that the time to market is decreased. So that, as I, I touched on it before, the time to open a bank account, it used to sometimes be up to one hour because there were so many paper forms to fill out. And it was like a little bit of a frustrating process for both sides. Now with uh, OZ eForm, it can literally be done in five minutes. The number of different forms also significantly reduce. In some case for standard charter, for example, we reduced the forms. They were, had a little bit more than 500 different forms. They reduced it up to like 250. -ish. So we had a reduction by at least 50%. The data fields also will significantly reduce. There is this auto population of the fields. And instead of having every time put a signature, what we can do if the customer wants it, if there, this is a requirement for the bank, and if it's legally possible, uh, which in Korea it is, we will just like add all of the forms together into one major form. And then the customer just needs to sign once. And the signature will just be replicated throughout every other form. So that's pretty powerful. And as I said, the sales efficiency really is increasing. Uh, up in, in, at, again, in Standard Chartered, we measured an uh, increase of 60% of sales efficiency because there was no more wasted time in doing these repetitive tasks or waiting for systems to, um, to, to bind, for example, um, forms in, in the case of a, of a PDF solution that follows is that there is no more missing fields and um the there is also no more error error um, or very limited error on the e-forms and uh in terms of the cost reduction so the cost reduction the biggest cost reduction or the cost cutting really comes from the efficiency gains but like if this efficiency gain is not always easy to, um, to calculate or to measure, but what is really straightforward is the cost of paper. Because of, of OZ, OZ, for CS OZ e form, this paper will totally be eliminated. So let's say that if the average cost of one sheet of paper is 11 cents USD, and an average office worker per year produces like 10,000 sheets, Per branch, let's say we have six um, employees on average that can, uh, like this, these are numbers that you can, um, that is just average, but on um, average standard chartered, for example, they, per country, we work with them for 11 countries, per country, they were able to save 1.64 million USD just by cutting up the paper, which is pretty, um, which is pretty powerful for for um, for a cost saving, and this is what makes OZ form the ROI. Um, like let's say it makes it unbeatable. So this is the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, you can you can type the questions in the chat, or you can unmute yourself. You can send us an email at global at forcecs.com or you can send me an email at uh, julie.govaert at forcecs.com. And um, yeah, I hope to hear from you and thank you so much for your attention.